There were great people who existed all across the African continent, from ancient times all the way to our modern era, many of whom I've highlighted and discussed on numerous occasions. Some may say that there's a difference between being great and being legendary, and I happen to agree. Becoming a legend, in my opinion, takes on a different energy or vibe, if you will. So when it comes to African historical figures, who can we say is the most legendary of all? What up African world, it's Home Team here and welcome back to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. And by supporting this channel on Patreon, you're helping in the creation of these videos and supporting this content. If you like access to full courses and sources, or you simply want to show your support, you may do so by clicking the Patreon link in the description box below. Now, legendary can mean different things to different people, and so I think it won't hurt to define it a little from my perspective. Legendary, in a nutshell, to me, simply refers to a memorable figure whose life story is a little romanticized to suit the needs of the people who they've impacted. So I chose five Africans who I thought might fit this definition, and I want you guys to choose who you think may be the most legendary figure in African history. If your person isn't on my list, please share who you think is the most legendary figure in all of Africa. So let's begin. It's very difficult to ignore the legendary status of Manza Musa. Even today, he's recognized as the wealthiest human being who has ever existed. That in and of itself can be seen as the greatest accomplishment for a human being, at least from a materialistic point of view. Manza Musa, as many of us know, was a Mandinka ruler of the Mali Empire in the 14th century who went on a pilgrimage to Mecca and he ruled from 1312 to 1337. Along his journey, he built centers of worship and gave money to the people. The story is really extraordinary. He gave away so much gold that it greatly affected the economy of Egypt for years to come. This journey not only put Manza Musa on the world stage, but it introduced his city, Timbuktu, as well. There's really no doubt about it. If it weren't for Manza Musa, the city of Timbuktu would not have its legendary status today. Now, I know many of us may be tired of hearing about Manza Musa and want to go beyond him, but that's exactly the point. He cannot be ignored in any conversation about the greatness and splendor of African history. What makes Manza Musa a candidate for the most legendary African figure was that he forced the world to recognize the power and wealth of West African civilization during his time and well after. The resume of Manza Musa is just tough to beat. Next, we have the legendary Nubian king Taharqa. King Taharqa was the king of the Kushite Empire from 690 to 664 BC. Now, the ancient fame and legend of Taharqa, if I'm honest, has always baffled me because I believe there were more successful Nubian kings than him, like his father, King Pai. I think when it comes to the legendary status of Taharqa, it perhaps boils down to two things, timing and youth. King Taharqa came to the Kushite throne during the peak of the Kushite Empire, also known as 25th Dynasty Egypt. He perhaps restored more buildings and temples than any of his predecessors and his back and forth battles with the Assyrians caught the attention of the ancient world. But at the end of the day, everyone likes a young royal. Taharqa was believed to have had some influence in the Levant region even before he came to the throne, navigating foreign diplomacy in the Middle East under his father in his late teens or early 20s according to some. Whatever the reason, his legend in the ancient world grew very quickly as some Greek scholars romanticized his military might suggesting that he might have advanced as far as Europe. Because a few Greek scholars decided to give air to this idea, people even today believe he did so. Even the Hebrews acknowledge Taharqa by mentioning him in their records as he's said to have sent military aid to a Hebrew king during his battle with the Assyrians, essentially saving Jerusalem, the epicenter of the Christian faith today. Taharqa, oddly enough, compared to most African kings, gets a lot of credit some well-deserved and some perhaps not. But in the end, we see very clearly the impact King Taharqa had and how he made the ancient world feel he was invincible. We have to give him credit for that regardless about what we may believe concerning his actual accomplishments. I think this Nubian pharaoh makes a great candidate for most legendary figure in Africa. 
The next candidate we have is Ramses the Great. The name alone demands respect, as he arguably became the most famous pharaoh in world history. The name Ramses became the quintessential symbol for Egyptian power in our ancient and modern eras. Ramses II came to the throne in 1279 BC in the 19th dynasty of Egypt. He was a successful military commander, very intelligent and even pious, as he built many temples and monuments and cities. Once again, like Taharqa, one of our infatuations with Ramses II has to do with his youth. Some scholars suggest that he may have been just a teenager when he came to the throne. Ramses consolidated Egyptian military strength during the peak of Egyptian military history. He defeated the so-called Sea People who were wrecking havoc all over the Mediterranean and his most famous victory, the Battle of Kadesh, is a constant in the minds of many. His victory over the Hittites is perhaps the most famous Egyptian victory in history. His participation in battle is also one of the most famous symbols of Egyptian power, inspiring popular culture greatly. For example, movies about the biblical story of Moses in Egypt depict Ramses as the pharaoh even though the literature doesn't at all mention the name of the pharaoh. His legendary status is really a reflection of how he single-handedly symbolized the entire history of Egyptian statehood and power. In other words, Though he existed relatively late in Egyptian history, Ramses II became the face of Egypt. Our next candidate barely needs an introduction. Just like how Ramses became the symbol of power in Egypt, one can make the argument that Shaka Zulu became the symbol of power for the entire continent. Shaka is just as famous as any other ruler on the continent, if not more. The amount of references he gets in popular culture is more than enough to give him the title for most legendary figure. Shaka Zulu was the king of the Zulu kingdom from 1816 to 1828, and what makes him special is how he single-handedly advanced the Zulu people by pioneering a military revolution for the entire region. Shaka was the most influential warrior king in southern Africa. During his reign, more than a hundred chiefdoms were brought together into the Zulu kingdom. He proved the advantages of his new tactics and trained Zulu warriors in the new fighting style. What also makes him legendary is because even after his death, his military innovations led the Zulu to become a formidable opponent even against Britain's modern army. The Zulus are arguably the most popular ethnic group below or above the Sahara. Even our modern military forces today honor the Zulu name in reference to military time zones. And make no mistake about it, the reason the world knows the name Zulu is because of Shaka. Shaka certainly becomes a tough candidate to beat for the crown of most legendary African figure. And last but not least, we certainly can't leave out Hannibal Barca. Hannibal is recognized by some as the greatest general who ever lived and is championed in popular culture because of this honorary title. Hannibal took control of the Carthaginian forces at the age of 25 and as tensions with Rome grew, he began assembling a large army. By 228 BC, a Roman frontier started to expand into Spain and Hannibal began to campaign there in order to ensure Carthaginian control. Hannibal took city after city as he militarily drove through. The wealth he acquired was used to purchase the supplies and troops needed to continue his trek. This is where the legend of Hannibal reached its zenith. Hannibal marched from Spain crossing into southern France and eventually reached Italy. His military victories and tactics were second to none. Roman generals were consistently outmaneuvered by Hannibal. They even sought to avoid a direct battle with him at one point. No image is so etched in our modern minds than Hannibal's crossing into the Alps with his African elephants. For whatever reason, that event took Hannibal's fame to the next level. I think it revealed something special about the human spirit its determination and survivability. Hannibal's decision to do that could have been seen as suicide, but it just showed us what kind of legendary man he was. If he would have failed in crossing the Alps, most people wouldn't even know about him except perhaps history enthusiasts. Not only did Hannibal win the respect of his enemy, but he won the respect of his troops by living the same hard life they did, eating the same foods, and even sleeping on the ground. His triumphant feats in battle against arguably the paramount military force on the planet gave him the title of the greatest military strategist in human history. Some of his tactics even survived into the modern era, which is absolutely remarkable. 
So given all these great rulers, which one do you think is the most legendary in African history? Really looking forward to what you guys have to say. Well I'm all out guys, if you like these videos and want to help in its continued production, consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself, remember your ancestors. Peace. <laughs>